Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy uh, with me, your host, Jan. That's what I say next. Welcome back to Chelsea News, the series where I give you Chelsea news, funnily enough, on the regs every day, in fact. And today, we're going to be talking about three stories. The first being... Chelsea Brazilian Willian has been talking again about his next potential suitors. Once interviewed, he was talking about how it would be no problem to go to a London rival. And in fact, he could even go back to Bay Jose Mourinho. Is Willian really going to go to Tottenham? The £75 million mystery bid. That's right, you heard me. £75 million, apparently, for Victor Osimhen. The striker, that's okay, pretty good. Apparently there's been a mystery club that's put in 75 million pounds for the player, really, in this current financial climate. I'm not so sure we'll talk about that. Could be Newcastle, I suppose. And finally, Frank Lampard was interviewed with BT Sport, talking about the pandemic and just general stuff, things that are going on in football at the moment. And he had some very telling comments about N'Golo Kante, which should wrap up any rumours of a possible summer transfer. So I'll give you the lowdown on that too. So an exciting and informative news video for you guys here today on Football Therapy. By the way, you might have noticed we are very close to hitting 50,000 subscribers. On the cusp, in fact. And if you watch my vids daily, which a lot of people do that are not subscribed, can I ask you guys there watching now to please sub to this channel? Why not, man? And if you enjoy it, hit the bell notifications icon and like the video, because it's all part of the cause, yeah? I'm not begging, I'm just asking. Anyway, let's get on with it. You know what, let's start with Willian, because he's been commenting about his future for a long time now, months in fact. Of course, the saga of his contract extension has gone on and on and on. And I think Frank Lampard kind of maybe probably has accepted that William might be out the door come a few months. I think he'll probably play to the end of the season if that gets extended past the normal date, maybe like a rolling monthly contract. But then I think he's gone. Now I'm gonna put a couple of quotes up on the screen that Willian was quoted saying about his next potential suitor as a club and Jose Mourinho. He was talking about how it would be no problem to go to a London rival. <laughs> oh, really, Willian? And he has also spoken of his close and loving romantic relationship with Jose Mourinho. Maybe not romantic, but he thinks he's the best coach he's ever worked with fine you know he probably got in his ear spoke portuguese said look mate you are better than neymar all that kind of gear do you know what i mean so there's obviously something going on with those guys point being willian could literally bowl up at tottenham hotspur now the tottenham fans aren't happy about this and i can understand why even if you do concede willian is still a very good player in his own right tottenham have got good wingers they do they've got who have they got? Bergwijn, he's very, very good. Son, he is also very good. Lucas Moore, he's good. You know, Deli Alley can play wide. They've even got Lamella. Um, I'm pretty sure there's another one in there that I've missed. They don't need Willian, but Jose will always need Willian. So, I mean, how do you, I don't think Chelsea fans will feel like it's a sort of tragic loss. Certainly Tottenham fans, or the majority, don't want him. It's really just the Jose Willian thing that would just annoy both fan bases somewhat. Still watch this space. Will he tarnish his legacy at Chelsea? I mean, it's really the one club you don't go to, isn't it? Like, really? It kind of is. Even if it's a sort of big payday retirement home thing, it's just not smart. You know, Lampard won't like that. Lampard's recent comments when Jose went to Tottenham as manager, he was like, yeah, I won't be managing Tottenham. I think he understands a little bit more Tottenham Chelsea connection but we'll have to see it hasn't happened yet they're just comments of course I'll keep you updated on football therapy moving on before we talk about the Victor Ossimhem super <laughs> super mystery bid mm, let's talk about N'Golo Kante Frank Lampard loves N'Golo Kante now he said in this interview with BT Sport he talked about how he's felt really bad for NG how he feels you know, the injury is really unfortunate for him and he's such a nice character and he loves him as like a, a person, you know, not off the pitch as well. And he feels a lot of pain for him. Now, if you remember, Frank Lampard always waxed lyrical about N'Golo Kante prior to becoming Chelsea manager. When he was doing punditry, he would often say, well, this guy's the best ever. 
when Frank Lampard was appointed at Chelsea manager, he continued to subscribe to that opinion. He was like, well, Angolo Kante, best ever. I'm going to be managing him. Brilliant. And Kante's only played about 40% of Chelsea's games, but due to injury. Now, we as Chelsea fans have watched Angolo Kante on the pitch under Frank Lampard, and he hasn't been himself. He hasn't been superb. It's not even been a positional change thing. He was still impressive under Sarri. His form wasn't great, he's getting closer to 30, and of course the injury problems are sneaking in. It's not just Chelsea fans, neutrals and journalists were all talking about maybe it's time to sell N'Golo Kante. But for me, in this interview, the way Frank Lampard spoke of the World Cup winning Frenchman, he was saying he's the best, you know, he's the best in his position, he's a world class player, maybe the only, he didn't say this, but I think it was kind of like maybe the only world class player that we have, although for my money, Kovacic has been the best player in Chelsea's team this season, granted because he was fully fit. The way Frank Lampard spoke of Agolo Kante in this interview, it was like, yeah, as soon as he's back, he's my boy. Which is interesting because in many ways, it, I just don't think it's going to give the balance to Frank Lampard's football. Like, who am I to tell Frank Lampard how to play his football? But I, personally, have guested on podcasts, other YouTube channels, and different platforms recently where, where I, as a guest, the hosts, or other guests, have all spoken about our, like, ideal midfield free for Chelsea moving forwards. And often, it was like Billy Gilmore at the base, or Kovacic at the base. Some people said Jorginho. And then, you know, you had Kovacic, Ruben Loftus-Cheek as the number sort of eight. And, you know, some people are still putting Mason Mountain there because he's been really, really good. Um, and a lot, no one really was picking N'Golo Kante, like very rarely. That's not to say we shouldn't play him. He's still, I maintain, he's still the only world-class player in Chelsea's squad. You just gotta think tactically, systemically. Point being, this part of the video is me letting you know Frank Lampard loves him and probably he's going nowhere this summer, which ultimately is a good thing. Right, Victor Osimhen, a striker in France, playing for Lille, who is pretty good. Now that is what he is, right? I know people like him. He scores like what a goal every other game, okay return in a relatively struggling team. Apparently, it's come out in the media, there's been a mystery 75 million pound Bid. Mm. Now we know a lot of top clubs are courting him, most notably for the sake of this video, Chelsea Football Club. And I think it'd probably be an okay signing. I think in terms of Moussa Dembele and Victor Osimhen, I think they'd both be good signings. I can't, I've always made this comparison of, remember when Chelsea bought Michy Batshuayi before Conte arrived? He was that sort of similar tier sort of striker from Liga, same age, the early 20s, scored the same amount of goals, he was playing for Marseille, Batshuayi, these guys, you know, Leon, Lille, is kind of the same sort of level, it's Chelsea getting like the ultimate backup option, do you know what I mean? But I guess because of Tammy, Tammy Abraham's um, sort of level isn't quite Diego Costa of course, so I guess, you know, you could say that these players could challenge Tammy for the number one spot. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Chelsea did want Victor Osimhen and make a bid for him. That would kind of make sense. But 75 million pounds? Nah, mate. No, 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 no. A, generally, no. <laughs> and B, not in this climate, man. We've talked about how the uh, health pandemic, how that's going to really affect the transfer market and people won't be able to do big money signings, maybe over 100 mil, but still, you're not gonna spend 25 mil less on a player that's just probably worth 30, 40 mil, I don't know, or maybe he's worth 50 million, I don't know, the, the market's changing, inflation and all that, oh, I get it, but a mystery 75 million pound bid, this of course could be coming out from its agent to try and mix things up, but what have you got to gain from that, saying, oh, someone's come in and bid that much? That would just shoo everyone away, surely, and they'd be like, no thanks, mate, bye, completely out of my mind, I've forgotten about you now. Do you know what I mean? So, what is happening? I just don't see what releasing that rumor gains any, like, party, whether it's club, player, or agent. Certainly not buying club, do you know what I mean? Unless, here it is, Unless, because this has been rumoured as well, it's Newcastle United, the richest club in the world. Maybe they came in, the owners saying, look mate, as soon as this deal gets over the line with the Premier League and we're, you know, in the door, we're going to break football, starting with buying this striker for £75 million. Why not? It's going to be fun. Pochettino's coming in? Probably not. Maybe. We're going to buy this striker, you know. Who knows what's going to happen? Personally, it's crazy. I, I mean, all these players could move. 
Cubs will need to sell players, including the likes of Lille. So, they probably will be looking to offload Victor Ossimhem, and if they actually have received a mystery bid of £75 million, legitimately, from any club, whether it's Chelsea, Newcastle, or whatever, they will absolutely rip their hands off. I hope it's not Chelsea. Even though I quite like the player, if my club pays £75 million on an average strike, well, I don't want to, on an okay, pretty good striker, it's just madness. Like, it's absolute madness. Rather, obviously, get Drew's Mertens on a free, play him as a second striker. Boom. Anyway, what do you guys think? I want your thoughts and opinions on the stories I've spoken about in this video. Get down in the comment section below and tell me your thoughts on the stories. And remember to subscribe, man, because we are so close to 50k. Help me reach that sweet, sweet landmark. Also, make sure you go subscribe to Yan's Yard. Link in the top of the description where I'm doing daily FIFA 20 live streams. That's a lot of fun. Make sure you swing by. Uh, follow me on social media at Football Yannick. And that's it from me, guys. So you enjoy the football that is very sadly not happening at the moment. And I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me,